Hello friends, this is Amy and welcome to my channel. Look at these fun little molds I got, Iron Orchid design. And look at these, uh, the pretty little farm animals. I'm just loving them. And for this first uh, craft, I'm going to go with the cow. And this is just an old piece of uh, scrap paper, scrap wood. And then this is something I made on Canva and I flipped it so I can do this technique. So let me show you. I just did a layer of black paint, allowed that to dry and went over it with white. And we're going to use a technique where you're kind of rubbing off that um, the paper with water once it dries. And so um, we'll walk through this process. If anyone has never seen this, this is kind of a cool technique. So now all the paint is dry. Let everything um, dry. And I did a couple coats of the white. And now, like I said, I have printed this on my um, inkjet printer. And it says, you know, normally you would want to use a uh, laser jet printer, but I don't have anything like that. So I'm going to just try this. And so I'm just looking at things right now so things can fit on that little piece of board. And I'm going to work on my air dry clay. And also that is an iron orchid design product. And we're just going to press it in there. And you didn't, I don't, didn't need to put anything in the mold. It came out fine. Um, and I thought, you know, just using the products meant for this would be the best thing to do. Um, this dries pretty fast. And so just to keep that in mind, also, when you are working on your project, that you'll want to keep this, uh, the clay that you're not using, keep that covered up so it doesn't dry out. And while everything's still wet, I'm just trying to take off and make that a flat back. And so just kind of wiggling that off and, uh, it's got these ridges, they're um, kind of raised, and it allows that flat piece to pull off the extra air dry clay so everything is um, nice and flat. So it's kind of a neat design, um, really neat molds. So once you've got that, this is still wet. And so I popped it out and then I just set it aside to let it dry. I figured it'd be easier to get it out when it's still kind of wet. You can see the thickness of that. It's not super thick. So it hardly took any time and that was dry. The one part didn't come out the tail. And so I had to reattach that once, you know, I've got everything out. Otherwise, you know, just take your time and it, it seemed to come out pretty good. The legs were a little tricky, but it did work. And so now things are pretty much dry. And as you all know, I'm kind of in the process of moving. So I've got Elmer's glue. I usually use more, you know, better glue, but I'm using Elmer's glue. And actually it's been working great. Um, it's just a white um, glue. Putting that on, on over every piece that I can put on there as far as uh, the surface and just gonna lay that down and let it dry in place. 
kind of straighten out the feet and everything else that needs to be adjusted. And now I'm going to put down that piece of paper. So this is printed on regular paper from my printer, just that thin paper. And then um, it is an inkjet. It's preferred to use a laser jet. I don't have it, so I thought I'm going to try it. So I put down a layer of Mod Podge, and then I'm just pressing it down. I'm not putting any over the top. Allow that to dry, and now we just go back with a little water, and we're going to rub the backing of that paper off and leave the ink in place. Now, since I'm using the ink jet, pr ink jet printer, it you know it kind of rubbed off rather easily, but it actually looked pretty cool, you know, as far as um, it's a farmhouse sign. Remember not to use too much water. And um, yeah, it's just kind of a, a feel for it. Um, see how I'm kind of rolling that away. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It was just kind of a fun project to do. Just kind of work at it. And the H on there, you know, it just, the way it went, it just came off more. I mean, it just came off fast. You know, I'm was trying to explain with that inkjet, it wasn't, it was very delicate. So here I'm just kind of cleaning up some of that ink. But it's good to know that you can use, you know, your inkjet printer if you need to or you don't have access, which I really don't have access to. A laser jet printer so I'm using what I have and just being careful and it works just adding a little grunge to that cow to kind of pop that out a little bit and as far as the milk cream and butter um I did do a little bit of line work on there just so that was a little more crisp. And I just love how this turned out. What do you guys think? That piece of wood was just a, you know, giveaway and we turned it into something really cute. Really liking those molds. Well, we'll for sure make stuff with that in the future here. Let's keep going. We've got DIY number two. Now this I picked up for like $6. I was just kind of out and about. It's just brand new and way too uh, new looking. So what we're going to do, this is the project when you are going to add cinnamon, ground cinnamon, and that'll give it like a faux rust look. And I'm just using paint to hold the cinnamon on. Just kind of go along the edges where you'd have a natural rust pattern. And then while it's still dry, you're going to sprinkle on your cinnamon. It tends to be a little bit of a messy thing, you know, messiness. And so, um, you know, put something underneath that you can just kind of toss. And at some point, I did just kind of use what was left on that um you know, the paper that's underneath. So I was trying not to be wasteful. The colors of paint I'm using there are like a dark gray and a black. And then once everything is kind of dry, it doesn't take long to dry because, you know, acrylic paints and stuff like that, they don't take long. I did take a brush outside and I kind of brushed it all off. And where I had put that cinnamon, it stayed just fine. So here it is. Everything's been brushed off. And it's got this new piece of chalkboard. When you have a chalkboard, it's a good idea to, to kind of... Um, you know, just run over it with some chalk before you write your what your word on it. 
for some reason it will um, hold that word forever if you don't um, go over it first with some chalk. And now we need to put something on the inside. And I picked up these little uh, yogurt cups for a brand here in the United States. And they were like a quarter or dime or something like that. And so we're going to use those. And I'm putting their little clear marbles. Um, I just like to use those sometimes when you're going to see through the glass rather than your green uh, foam, you know, for florals. It'll hold the flowers too if you use something like this. And then just kind of gather it up and we're going to pop that in there and those will hold nicely. I hope you've been enjoying my video. These were very fun projects to make. It's fun to get back to doing some crafting again. Um, I'm looking forward to Christmas in July. I will be doing at least two videos, uh, even though I'm in the middle of a move. It's such a successful, uh, you know, for ratings or views and that kind of a thing. Christmas in July tends to be a very good time for me to put out a video, so I will not be missing that. And a lot of times, the first video is a good old ornament video. So I've been looking at ideas and doing some thinking for that Christmas in July that will be coming up next month. So what do you think of this? Isn't that just cute? I love how this turned out. This was really cute, but wait till you see the next DIY. DIY number three. Now, is this not interesting? I was at a thrift store and they had this for $2. And look at this, you just open it up and you could put a picture in there. Well, I decided to just go with, you know, a standard floral picture, but I wanted to put some paint on there to kind of grunge it up. It's kind of a sage green. I didn't have to do anything. It was already ready to go. So we're just going to add some white paint and um, make that kind of uh, grungy looking and uh, farmhouse. Now the print I end up using, I will put that in the description box if it's something you like. It was a free print. I think it was Craft Mart. I think I had written it on the piece of paper, um, craftmart.com. I'll put a link to that. But those shutters, aren't they just cute? So what I ended up doing is I glued those so they did not close because the one door kept kind of coming coming back. And um, I thought, we're just going to glue it so it's open now. So it's going to stay permanently open. And here's the back. I'm uh, just going to take that out. And that would be where you'd put your photo. And since we're making this into decor, I decided to find a floral that kind of went with that pretty sage green. I'm using my the glass part there, which is actually plastic, but I'm using that as kind of a guide as to where to cut that. slip everything back together and close it up. And now I'm looking at it going, it really needs a little bit more. And so I decided to put some moss on it, thought that would make it look kind of spring-like and French country where you've got the moss and the shutters and that kind of a thing. Let me know what you think. Do you like this?
So I just went along and put some moss wherever I thought it needed it and went with that in the good old white, white glue. Isn't that fun? I just love how it turned out. And it's got a hanger. A person could hang that on the wall too. Well, let's keep going. I've got one more DIY. DIY number four. This, I was with my friend and we were garage sailing. We had kind of came upon one. This was $1. And it was kind of odd. It slipped off the top and then it was stationary. Like you could put stuff in there. And then that other thing would be like a, a lid. And for a dollar, I thought I can, I could try. Let's give this a whirl. So I knocked that first panel off and I left that, uh, you know, took everything apart and I put some black spray paint on this piece of chicken wire and let that dry when on both sides. And then just went ahead and got the good old um, chalk paint out and gave everything like two coats. Now everything's dry and I'm just gonna tack in that little chicken wire and I'm using that that piece that slides down and I'm actually gonna kind of anchor that underneath it and it will get glued down, but I'm just kind of showing how I did that. And once I got everything glued in, then I finished painting it and letting it dry. And now I'm going to show you how to print on tissue paper. This is your paper that you would use when you're wrapping a gift. You're going to put it on a regular piece of paper that you put in your printer. And again, this is a inkjet printer. Tape it down very well. And it popped out and I noticed that lo and behold, it had printed over the top of the tape. So then I knew where it was going to print, so then it was easier, and then I just kind of crimmed it off right at the edge, and I didn't even put tape. I taped the top of it, but not where the edges are. And this time, it printed out very good. It's kind of a fun technique and it's not expensive. And uh, I actually made this on Canva. I'm going to try and um, offer these printables for you and uh, then you can print them out too. I like to rip around and that goes down better on the, uh, it doesn't show the edges. So of course we're going to get the Mod Podge and apply a nice layer on the top of my my little shelving unit here. And then I just put it right down into place. I wished it would have been up just a tad bit more, but that's how it went. And now I just want to show you, because it's got that wood look underneath, I was able to just sand this um, chalk paint down and then that wood just kind of popped up. And chalk paint, if you haven't, you know, noticed how nice and soft it can be when you sand it like that, it just makes it so nice and smooth. And then I went over it with like a wipe and just kind of took off all that chalk dust and it just made it look so cute. So what do you guys think of this? It looks kind of shabby chic in farmhouse. It was one whole dollar. And that's something you could probably hang on your wall, although this is a pretty heavy piece. Um, I'd probably just keep it on the floor or you know put it on a table or something like that. 
you can do this. If you find these fun pieces, you can make them into fun farmhouse, beautiful decor. Thank you, my friends, for uh, watching my video, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.